Um, yeah, so the title of my talk is this crazy, awesome talk that uh, we put together, and, and really it just comes down to uh, OSM and Esri, really. Um, but it's, it's much more than that, and more than I could have actually put on this slide. So, um, so really, I, I have a couple agendas um, in my talk today, and that's, that's sort of be the Esri uh, representative that... Um, uh, we'll come to you and and and, uh, and and basically relate what Esri's doing with OSM and how we're working it into our sort of world, um, and then sort of shift modes a little bit and be the uh, put the developer hat on and talk about um, a project that I started at Esri and how we're using it, what it does, um, and how we're starting to fit. Uh, uh, OSM into that. So, uh, so my name is Christopher Helm. I work for Esri. I used to work for a company called GUIQ. Um, now we're part of the uh, Esri Development Center here in DC. So uh, we've been at Esri for a couple years, and um, GUIQ has had a long history of, of um, having employees and having uh, people involved in OSM and in, uh, in, in general just the community, right, in different, different sort of uh, open communities. And um, so yeah, so, so basically I'll, I'm going to start by covering a couple topics that uh, center around what Esri is doing with OSM. And uh, historically, our users, uh, the users of the ArcGIS platform, like desktop, right, and things like that, um, have used something called the, o the ArcGIS OSM editor. And it's an open source plugin to desktop that basically lets you import like an OSM XML file, uh, bring it into desktop, run network analysis, um, do, do the things you, you do with, with sort of road network data inside uh, your normal workflows, which is desktop, right? And so um, it also lets you essentially um, make edits and then produce a new file that can be uploaded out to OSM. So, um, so this is historically how people have sort of interacted within our community, right? So, um, so it's on it's on GitHub. Um, a lot of people know a lot more about it than I do, actually. So, um, so the other thing we have that involves OSM is our, our community maps program, which is essentially like how we, uh, how we build our base maps, right, for all over the world. And, and really what this is saying is that um, within the community maps program, we have this concept of authoritative data, right? Um, like what we determine as the authoritative data set for an area makes it into our, our community base map. So as part of this, um, I think a lot of people inside Israel are, are you know, always thinking about, well, how do we, how do we incorporate um, OSM into this community maps program. And so finally, what we're, we're announcing sort of uh, this week, or today, me right now, uh, is that on Tuesday, <laughs> um, on Tuesday or Wednesday, no, no, the 16th, whatever day that is, uh, the 16th, conveniently after state of the map, of course, um, that uh, uh, OSM data is actually in Esri base maps for the first time, which is pretty cool because it, it takes a lot of people, uh, a lot of work to, to sell this up the chain and make this a part of, of of what we determine as authoritative data. And so this is actually um, starting out with just covering Africa. So we're using OSM data to bring it into our base maps um, and, and really determine it as, or really it just internally says to ourselves that we determine, or we feel that OSM is the authoritative source, which is pretty cool. And, and really it comes down to this, uh, my colleague Christine White, who is always sort of coming to the OSM events and talking to you all and, and doing really great things. And I think a lot of this doesn't happen without her great work. And so it's cool to see someone really believe in a community and bring it into an organization that might not always um, have the best reputation or, um, or have a history of working in such an open way. So she's done a really good job. So a lot of props to Christine, who's not here, sadly. Um, so but, all right. So now shifting into sort of what I'm talking about. And um, uh, so it's, it's called Coop. And it's an open source project that started last year at Esri's uh, user conference. And um, really, my, my goal is to sort of tell you why you should care about Coop and what Coop is doing to, um, to make things more awesome within Esri and, and open up data that historically our users don't really know about to their normal workflows. So um, it's on GitHub, it's open source, um, and really the gist of what Coop does is it turns GeoJSON into feature services, right? And and so a feature service to us, right? Um, I'm, I'm I'm the Esri developer. I'm the the uh, the Esri user. A feature service to us really means like a, a, a Geo API essentially. It's uh, it's our vector 
service that lets us query things and, and select things based on a, a number of parameters, like geometry, right? Um, it, it basically drives all of our web-based development and also brings things into desktop, right? So it's a feature service. And so, so it started out as this concept of like, man, what if we could just take a GeoJSON file and spit it out as a feature service? And then conversely, we also had a directive from some of our bosses at Esri to to build a sort of third-party API or service that turned feature services into GeoJSON, right? Because we historically don't actually support GeoJSON, which um, we want to support really bad. And so, and our team came saying, you know, screaming GeoJSON, GeoJSON, right? And um, and so our, our directive was to actually turn feature services into GeoJSON and, and back and forth. Um, but when you work with me, you get a little bit more, right? You, um, it's not just like, oh, I'm going to do the one thing you asked for. It's like, it's actually going to be 10 other things, too, that I think are cool because I work a lot. Um, and so uh, if you ask Andrew Turner, it's like, well, um, what you get with me is essentially, um, uh, I'm going to scratch an itch. Right? And then convince you that you should pay me to scratch that edge, right? So that's what Coop is. And so, so um, really, really, why should we care at all about Coop, about what we're doing? And the answer is it's ETL, right? It's, it's the ability to take a data set and convert it and translate it and load it and extract it and put it wherever we want to, wherever we want to put it or use it to suit our workflow, right? It's, um, it's, well, here, actually, I'll, I'll go to the architecture. But so, so generally, a very, very high-level concept is that we can take all these external services and feed them through Coop and produce GeoJSON and produce feature services, and we can load them into things like Leaflet, and we can load them into ArcGIS Desktop, and we can use them in ArcGIS Online, and all these things, right? It opens up this really broad world of, of, of data sets. Um, and so here I've, I've listed you know, GitHub, and Gist, and ArcGIS Online, and Socrata, really any open data API, which is cool. And so, so what this is sort of becoming, or what, um, where this is going, is that it's, it starts with GeoCommons, right? This is a product we created that was um, sort of brought into the SVR architecture. And, and right now, we're transferring, or we're translating what we do with GeoCommons, and, and the concepts and ideas of open community, open data, visualization, um, and really ETL, uh, into something we call RGIS Open Data, right? So, Open data is this next version of something, uh, next version of GeoCommons itself that we're developing right now. And really, the, the gist of what open data is, is it allows our customers and our clients to curate selected sets of open data for, for free if they're part of our sort of organization, our umbrella. Um, they can go in and, and select certain things they want to make open, assign licenses to them, and then develop a highly curated little UI and interface that is open and lets, lets people get it in whatever format they want. They can scrape it, they can hit it, however. Um, so Coop is actually going into production with this product, right? Um, it, is, it is driving the ETL engine. I think I should speed up. I have a lot more. Um, so, so really, it's ETL for APIs. And that's kind of this word I've been, I've been throwing around and, and thinking about, is that how do we take APIs that are all despair and always talking to different things and working in different ways? How do we come up with a common platform, right? And uh, I, I think I was going to mentioned this earlier, but so it's a node project, so it's all node, it sits on top of host GIS, it uses um, you know, GDAL bindings to essentially just convert data. Um, we drop it into a cache, we invalidate the cache, and, and use post GIS to basically do feature selection and stuff like that. Um, so that's sort of our stack. Um, but, but okay, so it's ETL for APIs, and it's also ETL for open data, right? It doesn't necessarily have to be an API, it can be really anything that we want to write a, a, an adapter, right? So Coop adapts to the web, it, um, it takes, you know, a simple model and a simple controller to boot up something that just translates it into GeoJSON, right? So, um, so really, to us, it's about interoperability. It's about doing things within Esri and outside of Esri that make things easier to use for everybody, right? So, um, so what we started with was GitHub, right? This concept of like, wow, GitHub's cool. You know, it's where the developers are. That's awesome. Um, you can map data on there and, and store GeoJSON. Um, that was awesome last year. And right when we started this sort of idea, um, or this really sparked the idea that we could take what was living there, use their API, and convert it into a feature service. That, that seemed to have, have a lot of power for our users. And, and we could make a lot of um, cool sort of applications and ideas through this interconnectedness 
interconnectedness with what GitHub was doing. Um, so that quickly turned into GIST as well. So GIST is just a little um, you know, text-based, I don't know how to explain GIST, but GIST, GIST is a part of the GitHub platform as well. It's accessible in the same sort of way, like anonymous and private GISTs, and you can pull them all down and convert them into feature services. So, also then Socrata. Socrata is a great open data provider that's in a lot of local governments. And what they're doing is these, again, curated huge lists of various kinds of data, not just geodata, right? And so, um, so when, we, when we wanted to do something with Socrata, it was like, well, let's, let's explore the idea of, of having a whole sort of um, slew of capabilities around this idea. And so if you go to Socrata, and this is sort of to walk through the little demo of what Coop, sort of how Coop works and how this it all sort of fits together in the bigger picture. So Socrata has a map um, of a data set. And, and that's awesome, uh, but okay, I just want the JSON, right? So here's the JSON. It's not a GeoJSON feed. It's just an array of data, right? It's got a latitude and longitude on it. So Coop can actually proxy that. It drops it into a, it proxies it, but also drops it into its cache. But um, it proxies it and then spits out GeoJSON, right? Um, which is now a structure that we can, you know, bring over to other mapping platforms, convert using whatever we want to do, and and things like that. But then to our users, um, they can also do things like the, the feature service query, like turn it into the Esri flavor of what JSON is, um, which which now can be brought into desktop, right? And now can be brought into RTS Online, um, can be used within within our customers' sorts of like existing software, which is really really cool because now we've connected this thing that's out there and changing, and we've put it somewhere we can then just manipulate it and massage it and turn it into whatever we want to do, right? And so so just following that demo through, it's now I brought it into RTS Online. Here's the data. Now I've I've run like a oh, um, run a uh, like a, like a drive time analysis, right? This is something you can do really easily inside RTIS online. Um, drop points in there to compute drive times and things like that. Um, so that's all living in Scrata, funneling through Coop, through this whole big maze, and then um, actually analyzed. So then uh, what's really cool is this idea that we can turn feature services that live inside RTS Online also into GeoJSON, right? So the whole thing is this inception of data formats that can just keep turning around in a big circle. And so what we just did right there is Socrata goes to Coop, goes to a feature service, goes to RTS Online, we run an analysis and it feeds back into the whole pipe, right? And because it's now uh, an actual item on RTS Online, we can, um, we can turn it, right? back into GeoJSON, right? And so it, it just sorts of starts this, this never-ending loop of formats that we can sort of twist and contort. Um, we can drop things back on GitHub and pull them in and, and, and so on. So this is really, really powerful to, to, for building really, really cool things and doing things in, in, in a very interoperable way. So um, on top of just an API, it also supports, this is like the, now the ETL side, right? The, the translation. So it, we can dump out GeoJSON, we can dump out KML, we can dump out CSV and shapes. Um, so also, you know, we're using it in production, but, but it's really an R&D project, right? It's my side project that I started on a Saturday, right? And, and then work on the weekends until I convince my boss that I should spend a Monday on it, right? And um, I'm not sure I actually convinced him, I just started doing it. But um, so, so as part of the R&D, uh, right, we, we think, well, you know, we're, we're good web citizens. We want to also push Esri forward. Right and make things that they historically have never been able to do uh, possible. So let's turn feature services into vector tiles. Right? Let's turn GitHub into vector tiles. So all of this is supported out of the box. Just um, you know, everything sort of boots on these routes um, after you've loaded up the provider and things like that. So vector tiles, UTF grids, ping tiles using Cardo CSS, has dynamic styles on them. Like all these things that that this is all really new and exciting to our users. Right? This is super fascinating stuff. Um, what I'm working on right now and, and talking with people here about is. is is the Matnik vector tiles, right? Like the sort of future of thinking about how we, we compress data, decode it, and do all these awesome things. How can we basically really, really be on the bleeding edge and expose our bosses and users and people to that we should be thinking forward. And, and instead of reacting to the community, we should be trying to participate in the leading edge of it. Um, so that's what Coop does, which is really, really cool. And, and so I think I've said that several times. So it's like really any geodata, any, any, um, anything we can conceivably turn into to GeoJSON, we could we could put into Coop. So so then another little thought experiment was like, well, all right, well, rather than an API, let's think about raw data, right? So how would we take something that's raw data and turn it into um, turn it into something Coop can consume? And so so I have this um, I have a long sort of history with gridded data sets and with um, uh, obsessing over climate data and, and thinking of ways to visualize temporal things. And um, so so I started messing around with um, the this, these big GFS grids, the global forecasting grids, and thinking about, well, um, I want to visualize these in some way. 
um, can Ku provide you know a, a reasonable way for me to get at this data? And um, and so what I did was I, I basically turned it into vector tile. So I drop it into PostGIS and expose that table as a custom sort of a little provider, right? So it, it acts like an API. So Coop doesn't really know the difference. All it sees is GeoJSON, right? It's completely sandboxed and walled off. Um, so excuse me. Um, so we uh, so we open up to vector tiles, and here's like here's this little demo. Now it's uh, you know rendered in D3, and we can pull it down. So this big grid that we can actually just subset and access if we had really faster internet, which you can barely see, I guess. Um, so so that's cool because now we're you know we're using vector data on the client, um, feeding it through something that's accessible as a feature service, right? Um, and then also as vector tiles, and then the vector tiles here um, just show the show the idea that we can sort of um, you know really apply a temporal sort of um, Mapping to it and changes. This is connected to my mouse as I move it around. It changes through January through uh, January through December. Um, but then also, it's like all right. Now, now where we really want to be is this idea that if we if we can break apart a, a data set into vector tiles, we also want to construct a grid back, right, to do things like um, more more better classification or, or interpolation on the client, which is this is global gridded temperature data now. Um, Dropped into PostGIS, exposed and pulled out as vector tiles, and recomposed as a, this big grid, and then mapped, right, and interpolated as a surface. Right, so it's super awesome, um, really, really exciting stuff. And but but really, it's just like that's one facet of it, right? So. Um, let me go back to my presentation. So, all right, vector tiles, we visualize it. Um, so finally, all right, OSM. So what does this mean for OSM? How much time do I have, I think? Um, probably a little bit. Um, so, all right, so now, now we finally get to OSM, right? All that build up tells a big story. And now hopefully we, we see that how we can flex this muscle that is Coop into something that might be helpful for the OSM community. And, and I have to preface this with, with that this is all very new stuff, right? We're, 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 um, we're not putting this in production just yet. It's, it's an experiment, it's another itch we had. We're part of this community, we wanna be part of it, we wanna do cool things. And um, so really, our question that we asked ourselves is how can we, how can we build something that leverages Coop um, on top of OSM to help us discover and explore and give us direct access to the data, right? And so, so really, it's like trying to answer the question of like how our end users are gonna use this data. And really, it's our end users are GIS users, right? There are millions of GIS users out there. How can we get OSM in some format to them as easy as possible and this is so this is the answer the question we're answering right now and we're, work, we're working through it so the process that we go through is all right ingest the planet right step one like come up with a big database we've already proven that we can we can take coop and sit it on top of a postgres database or a postgres database and expose out that climate data as different formats and do cool things with it so can we do the same with osm so we drop it into um in, into the standard sort of uh, schema and structure um, and then we think all right well now now i've got a database well how am i how am i actually going to access it and pull it out and really that, so that starts with like the zero order analysis of counting the data just figuring out where data is and how data um, how data is distributed did. And so, um, so what we do is, uh, no, well, I'm actually going to talk about the, the, the structure. So, so really want to find points, lines, and polygons. That's what it comes down to is like, can we treat OSM not as this big engine for uh, creating base maps or, or, or doing anything like cartography with cartography or, or composition, it's, um, it's actually getting the raw data, right? Treat this like a resource that a GIS analyst might want to use it as. Um, so, so we have uh, basically just rest endpoints for points, right? So it's coop slash OSM points, uh, it's lines polygons. Um, but then it's like, all right, well, that doesn't really give us much, right? I can, I can expose, you know, 11 million points in a JSON. It doesn't really do me any good to think about actually working with that data. So we want to be able to drill down. And so, so the first step is just index the hell out of it, right? And so what we're doing with Coop is exploring how do we, how do we most effectively and appropriately index our database to make it fast and efficient to retrieve information from. So, um, so we start counting, right? Um, and our indexes on here make counting really, really fast. And so I click on this and see that we have counts by state, right? I've only done this for the US just because I'm playing around with a small chunk of it. So, um, so here's the US, it's just counts number of points. This has a full sort of where API as well. It can, it can drill down and give you these, these high level aggregate counts, which again is zero order with analysis, but it's, it's very important to be able to do and discover. So again, then, then drill down to the next admin level. And after seeing uh, the, the uh, Foursquare talk yesterday, um, start realizing that 
uh, I, think, I think actually rather than using some the, like natural earth or um, states and counties and things like that, we should be using OSM to actually index itself and explore ways to access like admin levels that are coming from OSM itself. And that would be a really cool sort of permutation of those work. So, um, so, but then it's like, all right, well, if I can get counts, um, I really want to discover and understand a little bit more about what's inside there. And so, um, so I can drill in a little bit, right? Drill in further and get cafes within a state. So OSM points state Colorado, where amenity is cafe, right? This is like very standard sort of like, um, you know, SQL on top of an API, that's not really fun. I like REST, so let's make it, rather than sticking this big, full, powerful um, SQL in my URL or in my URI, it's, um, it's actually provide a hook in that can be referenced and, and always give me that representation of the data. So now we have Field Amenity Cafe. Um, so then it's like, you know, we can dive a little further, County, Boulder, Field Amenity. Cafe, right? So this is the sort of API we've built. And, um, but then it's like, well wait, that doesn't really give me enough because how do I know that there's something called amenity and how do I know that there's something, um, that, that there's actual values inside the table tagged with cafe, right? So, so we provide hooks into distinct values. So it's like OSM points distinct amenity, right? So it gives you out all the distinct values based on that amenity, right? Um, so you can see where this is going. We can drill in and see what these distinct values are based on space and time and aggregation, right? Um, talking about. Um, so the um, other thing is, all right, well, fields too, right? So we can get distinct fields, we can understand the schema and explore it through the API. Um, so we're building up all these little endpoints and, um, and we want to explore it, right? So where we want to actually get the data. So, um, so we can pop open, you know, uh, toilets in Portland, right? I mean, this is, this is really just me like trying to find cool things that, that I might not otherwise be able to access really easily from the database. And I mean, as, as easy it is to sort of work with a JSON API, it's like, all right, um, <laughs> this is just the building blocks for making it more accessible to our users because here, here's a GeoJSON API. I can also drop in feature service on here and get our whole feature, little, um, our, get all our software talking to the, to the same stuff. Um, so, and then, and then uh, yeah, I can go back and it's like, okay, if I want to uh, drop in, you know, dot KML, right? And it's going gonna, it's gonna to download all the toilets in Portland, and I didn't actually prep this or test this, so. Um, it's going to drop all the toilets in Portland onto Google Earth and um, somewhere in there. So, so that's really cool, because I just took OSM data and um, converted it to KML and opened it in Google Earth. So, I, so now, now, we're, now I can go show this to my users, and they get it, right? And they understand, like, wow, I can actually extract information that I needed to know where all the toilets were in Portland for my analysis or something, right? Uh, um, and then, um, so, and uh, same with CSV, zip is for shapefile because it's kind of crazy, right? Um, and uh, so then also uh, we can pipe it to GeoJSON. Like GeoJSON IO is so sweet that we can, um, that we can, you know, uh, you know, take the same toilets and pipe them over to GeoJSON. I didn't test this either. George so. Michael have anything to right. Um, so, so right there, we've, we've now taken that GeoJSON and piped it over GeoJSON and it pull, pulls it up and we have it in, in a completely different workflow that has nothing to do with our users. So super exciting. We're really uh, into the idea of what we're doing. And um, we think, you know, like I said, this is, this is R&D. This is an experiment. We're trying to think about how to use this um, going forward. And so I think, I think one of the ideas we have going forward is uh, to turn this to turn these lists of data sets, so the, those, those REST endpoints can actually be registered within our open data platform and pr start providing different hooks for searchability and provide different indexes on top of um, that actual API. Cool, five minutes. So um, I think I'm, I'm essentially done. So, so start building off these curated lists. So say a government in Colorado or a county in Colorado or a city, wherever, can basically um, provide their users really, really distinct hooks into specific data sets. They're all actually coming from the same place, right? Because the URLs are just constructed and they're very ephemeral, right? So, um, so then on top of that API, so um, I've, I've also built a little, um, I didn't push up the latest, wow, okay. Um, let me just go local host here, so. Um, so, so I've also built a little API on top of it, or a little UI on top of the API. So it's like, oh, this is fun. I can I can sit here and you know visually explore it because that's you know going to provide me a little bit better sort of uh, introspection. So um, I can zoom in and see. Um, oh, come on. <laughs> 
There, all right. So, um, so I can see like you know just just core plus. This is just the counting API, right? But it's like okay, well I can I can score points, lines, and polygons, and I can actually look at all the amenities, right? And this is this is actually just meant to construct a URL for you, so you can actually access this data. So this is nothing more than just a little a little experiment that I'm putting together to explore my own API. And um, so as I dive into say Larimer County, and this is where Fort Collins is, you can see the the, the URL grows to say County Larimer. Um, the the, the amenities Amenities updated to show me only the amenities that are in with, within state Colorado and county Larimer um, and uh, cafe or, or whatever. So we pull that up and um, see the cafes, right? And then and then the idea is, you know, again, like KML, pull it into Google Earth, downloads it, and shows me. Uh, and, and, I mean, none of this is planned, right? This is this is what I've been doing for the past two weeks, uh, drilling in and finding all the mountain bike trails in my town, right? And and thinking about like, well, here's all the ski resorts too, and um, here's all the, the the trails and things like that. So um, that's it. So any questions or yeah? Is it just a one-way flow, or you put data back in through? Uh, right now, it's just a one-way flow, but nothing nothing really would stop us from making it a one-way flow. You just had to extend it with routes. That's all it is. I mean, extended to have like a post instead of a get. Aaron. So I came in late, so apologies. Sure. This is just uh, the plan OS and the PGSQL, so it's not the entire tagging database. Right, it's not. Yeah. Yeah, and I think that would be um, where we want to go with it next is, is really because, uh, um, yeah, I think basically opening up to much more data to, to have a lot more introspection on it because it's not the entire database. And actually, I, I ran into that as an issue. So I think that, that gets fixed pretty quickly because I want all things with like pissed difficulty and things like that. So cool. Anything else? I think I, oh yeah. What's the license? Uh, everything, everything we do um, on GitHub right now is is Apache 2 license. So, um, unless unless it's forked from somewhere else, we inherit those licenses. But it's so it's Apache. Thanks, appreciate it.